Do you remember Sly Cooper? Okay, what if I told you Ratchet & Clank actually killed Sly Cooper, like literally killed? <laughs> After years of thieving on the PlayStation series of consoles, the trio was set to have an animated movie hit theaters in 2016, but clearly that didn't happen. So let's dive further into the story with a brief overview of the game series, the rise and fall of the film itself, and the little glimmer of hope there is for Sly Cooper to return in a new form. Sly Cooper was, and maybe still is, a PlayStation exclusive video game series that started on the PlayStation 2 with a trilogy of games developed by Sucker Punch, who today is more known for the infamous and Ghost of Tsushima series. After coming to a satisfying conclusion with the third game, Sucker Punch exited from the franchise to work on the first infamous title for the PlayStation 3. Years later, Sony would hire Sanzaro Games to remaster this trilogy for the PlayStation 3, and a special bonus would reveal a teaser for a fourth Sly Cooper game. Sanzaro Games would develop the fourth entry in the series, Sly Cooper Thieves in Time, which brought back everyone for a new adventure, but would annoyingly end in a cliffhanger that, so far, has currently been unresolved. That was in 2013. During that time, Sony and Blockade Entertainment began experimenting on PlayStation IPs to develop into films, starting with a 2014 Heavenly Sword animated adaptation that was just… alright. It was released straight to disc and digital with a very limited theatrical release in select regions. Impressed with the results, Sony enlisted Blockade Entertainment, along with animation studio Rainmaker Entertainment, now known as Mainframe Studios, with further projects. One being a Ratchet and Clank film that was teased in 2013 and later released in 2016. In January 2014, Blockade Entertainment announced their next project after Ratchet and Clank would be Sly Cooper, where a teaser trailer revealed a planned theatrical release sometime in 2016 with a 3D version also available. This teaser trailer gave us our first looks at some of the characters and introduced new designs for the trio of thieves, Sly Cooper, Bentley, and Murray. While the look of Sly and Bentley were more positive, with many shocked that Sly now wore pants, Murray's design had a huge backlash. He sported a more rugged, tough, strongman look. He was that type of guy who looked like he liked to go to the pub daily after work for a pint, in comparison to his look of that in the games. Another concern for the film was the voice cast. Original voice actors for Bentley and Murray return, but Sly Cooper was recast with veteran voice actor Kevin Miller replaced by Ian James Corlay, who is more known for being the first English voice of Goku from Dragon Ball Z. Kevin Miller was disappointed to not be asked to reprise the role, but Sony did reach out to him, informing him of the casting situation, and Kevin only wished the best for the film to do well out of love for the series. However, the voice cast of the film was not finalized by the time of the teaser trailer, and there was a chance for Kevin Miller to join the cast, much like how Ratchet and Clank featured many of the voice actors from the game series mixed with Hollywood actors. Kevin Miller also emphasized for fans of the series to stop complaining about the small, tedious things like Murray's new look and to have a positive outlook for the movie to gain popularity. Not much is truly known about the general storyline of the film, but the film would have followed the first game, Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus, with the intention to avoid a complete origin story. The following synopsis was also released. Sly Cooper is a kinetic and comedic heist film that tells the story of Sly Cooper, an orphan raccoon thief, and the adventures of his childhood friends and partners in crime, Bentley and Murray. In the film, Sly learns that he comes from a long line of talented international thieves and is catapulted into a global adventure. Sly races to reassemble pieces of an ancient book holding the Cooper clan's family secrets before it can fall into the hands of Clockwork, an evil metallic owl bent on ending the Cooper family line. From romantic Parisian backdrops to the lush mountains of China, gritty film noir meets bright, colorful graphic novels in this origin story of the world's greatest thief turned hero. It's likely the film would have followed the blueprint laid out by the Ratchet and Clank film, where it's a reimagining of the first game, familiar for fans of the video game series, but fresh for a broader audience. Obviously, the main trio of Sly Cooper, Bentley, and Murray were confirmed as characters in the teaser trailer, and we can assume Clockwork to be involved based on the synopsis. It's also likely Carmelita would be included since she's appeared in every Sly Cooper game and typically plays an important part in Sly's life romantically, despite being on the opposing side of the law. With the synopsis spanning the globe, 
Other enemies featured in the first game probably stand and slides away, but with it being a film, the number of villains is likely cut down or made into new characters to avoid too much complexity, so the focus can be on the main baddie, Clockwork. Much like how Blockade Entertainment worked closely with Insomniac Games on the Ratchet and Clank film, they would also have involvement with Sucker Punch Productions, the original developers of Sly Cooper. Despite the video games having an iconic cel shaded look, this wouldn't necessarily translate well into an anime movie, so CG was decided upon, a decision that was supported by both Sony and Sucker Punch. But things would turn sour when the Ratchet and Clank film hit theaters on April 29, 2016. With a budget of $20 million, the film would only gross $14.4 million, becoming a certified box office bomb and creating a mess for PlayStation's first shot onto the big screen. Ratchet and Clank's failure would severely impact the Sly Cooper film in what already sounded like a delayed development. At WonderCon 2016, the film's writer and director Kevin Monroe admitted that the film had yet to enter production. After the box office bust of Ratchet and Clank, Rainmaker president Michael Heffron would have the studio rethink timing, how they release, and the budget numbers they consider releasing films at. With no word on the release of the film, an updated trailer uploaded by Rainmaker Studios in January 2017 would replace the original breaking into theaters in 2016 simply with the movie. Rainmaker would further remove the Sly Cooper movie from their website entirely in November, and in December of that year, Rainmaker exited the project by selling their rights of the film to four other partners for $132,990 but would receive $200,000 if the film should be greenlit by another studio in the future. All we have now to remember this film by is the initial teaser trailer, the synopsis, and a few design documents based upon the trio of thieves, which includes an admitted mistake of including a biker helmet on Bentley rather than his signature one. Basically, the Sly Cooper movie was cancelled without a proper cancellation. However, it wouldn't be the end for Sly Cooper, but there is a catch. In 2017, Sony Interactive Entertainment would later announce a television show to be in development by Technicolor Animation Productions, who also made the Sonic Boom series. The series would consist of 52 11-minute episodes, with half of the series planned to premiere in October 2019, with the second half in July 2020. And that catch is that the series would be aimed at children 6 to 10 years old, which sometimes means that things tend to be dumbed down and altered. The only concept of the show we have is this picture of Sly Cooper's design by Technicolor, which is almost the same as the movie, just not as detailed as TV shows that feature CG, need to produce episodes at a faster rate than the film, and have a lower budget. There was also mention of a return to a Sly Cooper film after the conclusion of the TV series, but clearly nothing of the sort has happened on both fronts. This doesn't mean that there isn't a future for Sly Cooper on the big or small screen. With the relaunch of PlayStation Productions, Sony is diving into PlayStation's large catalog of IPs with the successful launch of the Uncharted film, with more projects in the works such as a Ghost of Tsushima film, and a television show based on The Last of Us and Twisted Metal, so it's safe to say that there is hope. And that is how Ratchet and Clank killed Sly Cooper. One film killed another. I imagine that if that film was a success, Sly Cooper would have been made and released without issue despite a delay in production. I personally love the design of the characters, especially Sly, and I know a lot of people hated Murray's design, but I really enjoyed this new interpretation. After all, it's a new take on the franchise. As much as I enjoyed the Ratchet and Clank film, just from this teaser alone, the film had a much more unique flair and style like in the games. I hope we can see something come from it in the future with PlayStation Productions. So let me know, would you have seen the Sly Cooper movie if it happened? Do you think that television show is ever going to happen? Let me know in the comments, please like and subscribe for future content, and if you want to dive into something else, why not check out this video on Ratchet and Clank Life of Pi? a pilot episode of a TV series that never happened that somehow mysteriously appeared on a Canadian streaming service in early 2021. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.